And this again, this on the back of the last couple of tutorials when we were doing, talking about the fridges and then talking about parallels. What I've done here is just a bit of an overkill, got a bit ridiculous, but it just shows if you take your time, there's pretty much nothing you can't do with these uh, prismatic. They work really, really well and they're super, super uh, reliable. So what I've got here is I've got a 105, a 105 and a 135 at the back here because that's much bigger. I've got that 105 there that's got a, a 5 amp second DC going across here to 14.6 volt, which is what they charge at. And this one's charging the 135 at the same 5 amp. Now, I don't have any 10 amps available. I'll just use them 10 amp, 10 amp, and then at 14.6 volt. That's what I'd be doing if I was doing this. And at the moment, I've actually got the 240 charger plugged into the first one. So I'm actually charging the first one as it would be if you're running solar or a car or whatever. And this is exactly how it would look. You'll see that's charging, however, it's not pulsating. That's not pulsating, and I think this is. So that's pulsating. Now, <clears throat> try and explain it. So if there's more going out than going in, it's not going to pulsate because it's actually technically not charging, but there is voltage and current going through. So this one here is charging this one, and this one is running the fridge. The fridge is the temperature now, and that's a 95 litre fridge running off that there. Now I've got a the air con over here, which is 24 volt. So what we've got is uh, 105, 105, 135 in parallel. So mathematically, that's what 300 and uh, uh, what's that? 345 amp hour. So I've got that available, but I don't have a 24 volt system. So what I've done is I've done a 24 volt step up, which is I've got here. Now that's a 15 amp one. I would normally run a 20 amp. I just couldn't find it. So on the output here, I've got. Remember this is 50 amp output. This here's going to draw about 18 amp running flat out when it starts. That's running in aircon mode. But I could still run a wire lead off that because the 50 amp output, I could still run my fridges. I could still run two fridges of, of a triple wire lead or, you know, out of this if I wanted to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this on and this is on the uh, aircon mode and I've got it sit 16 degrees. <clears throat> so it's going to howl a bit. And normally this has the funnels and stuff coming at the back, which is the input, which is, and the output. So one's hot, one's cold. And then you've got the inputs over here. So what that's going to do, if I had my Bluetooth with me, you can see that's not pulsating now because there's more current going out than going in. But if you're in a campsite, you could actually run the camp like this if you knew what you're doing. And try to run as much as you could out of this one. And you've got and a fast USB and you've got two sticker plugs on your other end of the 135. But you can still use them, but I would suggest going 10 amp, 10 amp, and then if you're filling that up at uh, 30 or 40 amp, you've got a good um, solar panel set up, maybe 400 amp, sorry, 400 watt or 480 watt. With a Victron, you might have 25, 30 amp uh, MPPT on it. Regulating the charge, because these only take regulated charge. You can have a charging that one, and feeding that, feeding that, and that. And you've got yourself full parallel setup, but also with a 24 volt setup output without running them in like a series or whatever. So look, it's gonna get confusing if you don't know a lot about um, dual and series and, and current and voltage and amp and so on. Then it's probably gonna get a little bit complex for you. But simply just say, well, that's charging that, charging that, and I wanna use that as an output. You can use them all, but just don't exceed the inputs and outputs of each of these and use the uh, acceptable uh, SIGA DCs or, or the um, step-ups, and you'll be able to configure it like this. So you could actually do this if you wanted to, and I know a lot of forests and stuff want that sort of a amperage output. So that's just showing you the versatility of the Nomad in general, but the L-Series specifically, because they are on top of the range. Um, they have the serial numbers on each of them which apply to the phone, and the app will show you all the voltages of each of them. They're all very low at the moment, they're about 12 or 13%. But they're all still running, that's a 95 degree there. That's drawing probably now, I would suggest, if I have my app, that's probably gonna be drawing around 12 amp at the moment. Um, and I can leave that happily running, because I'm setting it on 240, that's charging at 10 amp at the moment, which is not a lot. But I can still set that and run, because I'm gonna charge that, I've got nothing there and there, keep that running for a few hours. That's how you can set it up. Um, don't do this just because you're bored or you've got nothing else to do. But I'm saying is that if you want to do something like this, you could. If you're not sure, send us an email. 
contact learnthepd.com.au and tell us why you want to do it firstly, not because you're bored, but tell us why you want to do it and which are the best way to achieve it to be able to uh, charge, top up and supply power to one of the accessories that you're trying to uh, run and achieve at a campsite. So again, versatility of the Nomad range, uh, contact at nomadpdu.com.au. I'm sure we'll get a lot of questions after this one.